Hello and welcome to our co-brand product, Kit Kat and My Protein Shake. I'm Rafi Dines and today I'm presenting with Georgia Halverson, Tom Moran, Lucy Bishop and Katie Willis. So, in this presentation, today we're going to show you why our product will succeed and we've got number one in the UK, all shakes. We've made sure it's only made before and that will prosper in the market. I hope you enjoy our presentation. Our co-brand consists of Kit Kat and My Protein and we aim to create the best tasting protein shake available, which is obviously Kit Kat flavoured. With our catchy statement, Pure Your Break it att will attract our target market, your chocolate lovers and gym goers who are looking for a post workout muscle repair protein shake, encouraging people to, to be health and fit, healthy and fit and give satisfaction. So, why do this? The health and fitness industry is increasing, but there's a lack of appealing protein shake take flavours. For a new innovation for Kit Kat, as there's need for revitalisation to bring them up to the latest trend to bring them to a faster growing grow market. Um, Kit Kat is, the is a value favour, as not many people just like it, therefore uh, we know that most consumers will. By having this program, it will add value to both my and and Kit Kat. It brings together two different audiences to validate their position as market leaders and by strengthening the dominance of overall region to differentiate themselves from their competitors. Some background history. Kit Kat was invented in 1935 and it is an affordable crispy wafer finger covered in creamy ch milk chocolate bar. Their current target market is men and women of all ages who are indulged themselves in chocolate but have a consistently low price and some competitors are Cadbury's and Galaxy. My protein was established in 2004. They, they say they, are, they provide high quality products but at a low price. Um, they have 1 million social media followers and have and had 500,000 500, customers in 2014 and their target market is gym goers and their competitors are, include Protein World and Women's Best. We have produced products by forces for Kit Kat My Protein and our co brand and discovered that the main area of concern is bargaining power of buyers. We have also conducted a pest analysis which includes political, economic, social and technological analysis of all brands involved. From this we have produced a SWOT analysis which collects all the information from the parts by forces and pest. Strengths include growing market. Kit Kat has a static market so it shows a need for market penetration. My protein and our co brand operate a fast growing market in the health and fitness sector. Reputation. Both brands are well established, however Kit Kat is not well established in the health industry, hence the need for revitalisation and expansion. Weaknesses include competition. Kit Kat has lots of competition from other low price biscuit brands. Our co-brand will have lots of competition as it will be sold on My Protein's website alongside other similar products. Unknown customer response can be considered a weakness and we can speculate because Kit Kat and My Protein are already so popular, the co brand will be too, but we cannot guarantee this. Two opportunities that may become available are the increase of product range. So, we can, if the Kit Kat protein shake goes down well, we can then increase to maybe a protein bar for people that are more on the go. And it's also expand our flavours as Kit Kat have a mint, orange, and white chocolate flavour too, so we can always turn them into a protein shake as well. Uh, some threats that may, that may come available is copycats. So, if uh, we make this protein shake, Galaxy may see this and if it goes off well, they may think, oh, we can do that because Kit Kat's doing it well and it's appealing well, well to the audience. However, we can't guarantee that our sales rate will be high. It may, it may not turn out as what we expect and therefore have a slow sales rate to not what we expected. There are three main groups. Demographic segment includes variables such as income and religion. The geographic segment includes variables such as population, city size and climate, and the behavioristic segment includes variables such as volume usage, benefit expectations and price sensitivity. We have decided to include four segment of psychographic variables as we believe that purchasing behaviour is correlated with the lifestyle of our buyers. To analyse the identified segments, we have used six guidelines. First thing the segment must be differential, as consumers are body conscious people who still enjoy hydrogen foods like chocolate. However, people who are body conscious and eat healthily can also enjoy the product as there are no health implications that come with it. The segments are dissimilar and we should be sure to keep them separate with separate target strategies. Our segmentation will be measurable as we have evidence and statistics to back up our suggestions. The target market must be substantial in order to make a profit and become a successful brand. We must position ourselves in a way that customers find easy to reach so our co-brand is easily accessible. We have chosen a stable market as it is predicted that protein drinks sales will continue to grow.
Our advantages of market segmentation include differentiation, target market selection, and tailored marketing mix. Disadvantages include cost, limited market coverage, and weakened brands. We went out and did primary research in Nottingham to find out information about jingoes. We could find out how often they bought protein, and there was all sort of training they did. Uh, 63 out of 72 people we asked that they would try to get that protein shake, and 56 that the flavour or taste was important to them. Or 31 out of 39 males that we asked said that they did train to build muscles, which is why we decided to build our product around this. Uh, some mental stats. So younger generation showed the highest use of nutrition, peaking at 42% from 125, which we think is a big part of our hiding market. And 35% of people who exercise regularly do consume uh, sports and nutrition products, which of this shows there's a big market out there for it. Uh, this is some secondary research. The first one shows that Kit Kat have dropped recently and they've had a 15% fall in sales. And the other one shows that uh, my protein and the protein market in general is rapidly growing. So therefore we think these are two things that complement each other one which help Kit Kat bring themselves back into the public market. Currently, Kit Kat's target market is all men and women that are youthful in nature. This is a mass consumer market. My protein target market is men and women that are in and have healthy lifestyles and attend the gym on a regular basis. Also, a very large target market. Our proposed target market for the new program will be based on a multi variable segmentation. We will be targeting men and women between the ages of 18 and 30 who are body conscious gym goers. This is based on a mixture of the two brands alongside the statistics for growing sales in diet and weight control foods. We have considered four targeting strategies, a differentiated strategy, undifferentiated, concentrated and finally customised strategy. Currently KitKat uses an undifferentiated strategy as they try to appeal to all men and women focusing on their take, take a break on the KitKat idea. My protein uses a concentrated marketing strategy focusing on fuel your ambition slogan, targeting consumers with a particular set of personality attributes. We have decided that the most appropriate strategy for our brand is a differentiated strategy as we have identified several potential targets with similar wants and needs. We have the resources to required to develop specific marketing mixes for each segment. Currently KitKat has broad appeal and therefore targets the mass market. It is cheap in price and medium in quality, hence its popularity. My protein has a narrow to medium appeal and attracts a niche market. And flavour is, is or quality of the product is, is not a priority. However, there is evidence that this market is growing and perhaps a co-brand can speak things up. Our proposed positioning statement for the co-brand is Fuel Your Break, a mixture of the two brand slogans meaning to fuel your rest period between workouts. To ensure efficiency of the slogan, we have adhered to four criteria. Clarity, consistency, credibility, and competitiveness. Our overall differential advantage is to provide excellent taste with a positive impact on the body. This is a simple and direct message that will resonate with customers needs. We intend to use the full strategy by developing our brand image before our product goes on sale and offering promotions and discounts. We feel that this will work well as both brands are already well known worldwide. However, aspects of the push strategy may need to be used at first until the color brand has been established. And using perceptual maps, you can see that both KitKat and MyProtein um, are perceived by customers as being in the bottom right section of the map. This is because they have more trouble price and good quality. Um, we've also used a perceptual map to examine, determine the position of our co-brand. Um, we've analysed it against competing brands such as Maxi Nutrition, Protein World or other My Protein products. We've also considered the attributes important to consumers when choosing a product, such as flavour, price, protein and fibre. Therefore, we think that our co-brand will be in the top right corner of the map as it's got a missing price, a unique flavour and good quality mixture. Hoya McInnes developed a black box model where two of the main contributing factors are consumer's behaviour and psychological thought. We can use this model to effectively attract customers using personally relevant and pleasing marketing stimuli. A well-being model of classical conditioning can be used to illustrate this. We repeatedly gave dog food while ringing a bell and eventually led, this led to a conditioned response of the dog salivating when it heard a bell as it associated with salmon food. Similarly, we can see this in ourselves when we buy jeans, for example. 
we continuously try different brands until we find the perfect fit and then repeat this behaviour every time we buy jeans because we associate that particular brand with being the best fitting. In relation to our core brand, we will paint an image in the consumer's mind using marketing stimuli so that they can see and associate the brand with being the best tasting. We will gain their attention by using visual stimuli and motivate them to buy the product by offering free partnering products such as a shape bowl. Components of culture include language, religion, aesthetics, education and more. The decision making process consists of five stages. At each stage, the decision can be terminated. Firstly, problem recognition where a need is felt by the consumer. Second is an information search where all, where all options are explored. Next is the evaluation of the options that were explored in the pre previous stage. From this, the consumer is able to make a decision on which brand will be the most suitable and whether to buy it. Finally comes the post-purchase evaluation, where the consumer decides if they made the correct choice. The decision-making process is based on reference groups. These reference group, group groups are people that the consumer associate with, for example, friends, colleagues, and family. The buyer might not decide based on their own desire to fit in and gain respect from others, but can also tr trigger a non-conforming behaviour based on the individual's personality and cultural background. We believe that our target market's decision will be highly based on reference groups. Place. We, our home brand will, will be located on our nine retailing store in Mike Crate and has over 4 million customers. Retail, why is this? Retail sales were above 48 billion in 2016, uh, 2016 and has risen 12% from previous years. As well, 51% of sports nutrition buyers use at least one online and retail site to buy these products. Sales growth with over just 71% in 2021 leads to sales over 20 of retail sites. Uh, as the market value as the market value increases to 81,000 in 2021. 60% say they check their online online uh, price before they even buy things in store. Um, one person says they feel like they're saving more money when buying online too, so therefore it has an overall advantage than buying in a normal store. Price. Co-brand for sports nutrition products can vary in prices with £2 from, from range from £2 for protein bars to up to £50 for large protein uh, weight tubs. Half for sports nutrition products weigh less than £20 per month on these. With four to three of sports nutrition products who use these online sites to typically spend the, that amount. My protein is the cheapest selling. Um, my protein is the cheapest selling um, sports nutrition price, uh, as their average price is fourteen pound ninety nine for one kg, and women's best is average price is twenty five, making this the highest up their, their four competitors. Um, so looking at looking at our competitors' prices, considering that fifty percent buy protein powder under twenty under twenty pound, we came up with our price is nineteen pound ninety nine, which is fairly cheap as my protein is selling for good quality but cheap prices. What makes this a high price compared to the average is because you are not paying for the flavour of Kit Kat that not many other brands do. Therefore, we on this on this thing we on this diagram we are at the back of penetration as we have low price but high promotion. Promotion. So for our product, we need to promote it to our customers. So we need to buy the product, so therefore we're going to do some sales promotion. We're going to use direct marketing scheme, direct marketing, because direct marketing will send personal information to our customers directly, which means it's like one-to-one, -one, like face-to-face. -face. Um, also on the board, I've got a blog off and um, get coupons, but for now, we use that because it weakens our brand image. Will be the fundamental intangible benefit, which is the source of protein and muscle gain. The actual product, product is the flavour and attractive packaging. The ornamental product is the customer service will, services will be included and the fitness website provided. Uh, the future product could be different Kit Kat flavours or protein bars. We will incorporate uh, the Kit Kat colour design, logo and um, colour scheme into the packaging and use the typical white protein packaging as shown. Um, our Kobe brand is a shopping type product which means that customers buy it often but they will consider things such as sustainability, um, price and quality when purchasing. 
um, my product has my protein has a large product level with offering shakes, bars, and other types of protein food. So therefore, we could incorporate the Kit Kat flavor into other protein sources in the future. Kit Kat's product line depth is relatively extensive, with many variations such as Kit Kat Chunky and lots of flavors. So communication. We have to inform, persuade, and remind our customer about our product. So we tap that to all levels. So cognitive, implement, cognitive communication is put something in the, in the consumer's mind. Also, effective communication changes the consumer's attitude towards our product. And the last one is behavioural communication. Consumers do something, make the art by it. Also, we use digital marketing, Facebook on activities, sales promotion, direct marketing, and advertising like the radio and posters. The current perceptions of Kit Kat by consumers um, are its youthful marketing and its iconic packaging. Um, from my protein, it's also got a fitness and lifestyle focused marketing. So for our product, we intend to um, make use of a unique flavour and target at 18 to 30 year olds, use attractive packaging and good quality and reasonably priced products. So, integrated marketing communications. Online marketing is the way forward nowadays because it's cheap and it's free and I can reach 24 7. Uh, for our co brand, our main integrated marketing creation is going to be Facebook. Facebook is good, I'll talk about the user, it's cheap, it's free, everyone has it. Also, we use Metaverse Magazine because this is the number one gym magazine and our target market is gym users. So, yeah, that's something we are Facebook, on social media, on the internet, and our magazine will be Men's Fitness. This is our AI model, it stands for Attention, Interest, Design, and Action. In order to gain attention, um, my protein has 1 million social media followers as well as 4 million customers online, so we're hoping that that will be enough that they put it as a homepage to attract attention for it. In terms of interest, um, we're hoping that by bringing a new flavour to market, that will spark enough interest anyway. Whenever Kit Kat do it, or they bring a new flavour, it does get interest, so we're hoping that will have the same impact. Uh, we're going to give sponsorship and athlete endorsements for the desire. This will see people who go to the gym and reap the benefits of it and give something people get in towards. And for action, we're going to say that the first product you buy will be rewarded or like joined with a protein shaker, which we're hoping will give a further incentive to buy products. Uh, this is our conclusion, and we hope that we've come with things that's just like the Pokemon team this partnership. We've built both on images. New customers, building on other customers, customer loyalty, and hopefully also joining the growing market will help build Kit Kat and MyProtein in this program. So, thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it.